welcome, 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 welcome to Sunday School on the Go. This is your host, Prophetess Denise Kelly. Welcome and thank you for another opportunity to come before you with the Word of God. So we're going to ask Minister Kelly if he would pray us in this morning before we talk about this great lesson, Mary Magdalene, a faithful disciple. Go ahead, honey. Amen. Oh, gracious dear and Father, Lord, I just want to say thank you, Lord, for this blessed day. Lord, thank you, Lord, for watching out of us, Father God, all night long. Lord, all week long, Father God. And Lord, Father God, thank you, Lord, for the weather, Father God. And Lord, for, for protecting us, Father God, even in times like these. God, we just give you all the praise and we give you all the honor. Now, Father God, we ask, Lord, for your special blessing of the Sunday school lesson this morning. And Lord... We ask, Lord, you touch our teachers all over the nation, Father God, and we pray for all the churches, Father God, Lord, is still yet declaring thy name in these last and evil times. We give you praise and we give you honor and ask, Father God, Lord, you come and visit us this morning. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. This is a great lesson. So I'm going to go ahead and give you your assignments as far as what I, who, who's going to read and what you're going to read. So the first scripture when we get to that part that we're going to read is going to be uh, Luke 8, 1 through 3. And we're going to assign that to uh, Missionary Montgomery. Mm -hmm. And then the second scripture is going to be Mark 15 and 40. And that's going to be assigned to Mr. Caleb Macbeth. And then I'm going to have uh, Minister Kelly. He is going to read. He has the most scriptures uh, since we don't have uh, Evangelist Montgomery. Uh, we're going to have uh, John 20. And it's going to be 10 through 18. But of course, let me first wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day. And in the, the spirit of Valentine's Day, we're going to talk just a little bit about, about that too as well while you guys are getting your scriptures and getting it together. But first, we're going to talk about what today means. So two has two, it has three meanings technically. Uh, one, it can mean, the meaning I'm going to use today is going to be union. And then today is the 14th, which is the double spiritual perfection number. Um, and so I heard the Lord said, we have the opportunity to share double spiritual perfection in our lives through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Don't let his life and death be forgotten or wasted. We can tap into this double spiritual realm by allowing God to make us, to make us or transform us into the loving creatures he intended. If you remember, Elisha asked for a double portion of God's anointing, um, and so should we. So, who is Mary Magdalene? Oh, oh, I forgot to give you a little history on. Let me go back to Valentine's Day. So, Valentine's Day is a celebration of love and affection by sending greeting cards, gifts, and uh, dates. I thought I heard something. Okay. Um, and dating. Uh, it also has, it's also symbolized by uh, church services as well. It was created by the Roman Catholic Church as a feast to honor St. Valentine, um, who was considered to be a romantic. And basically his life ended. He was executed. Um, he actually, there's a story where it says that he restored the sight of a jailer's blind daughter and that he wrote a farewell letter to the daughter. And that was the first Valentine. Um, and at that time, they were not uh, allowed to marry. And so he wrote this Valentine or letter uh, expressing his love and concern um, in reference to uh, the daughter. Okay. Just a little history stuff. We do stuff. We don't really know what the real history behind it is, uh, but it, it, it's always got a history. Just remember that. There's always a reason why we do certain things. So let's look at who is Mary Magdalene. 
So Mary Magdalene lived in the plains of um, Gesserit on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. She lived in the city of Magdala, which is the reason why they call her Mary Magdalene after the name of the city. Um, she had a, a problem. She had she was possessed by demons, seven of them. She was had issues physically, mentally, as well as spiritually. And of course, Jesus cast out these demons, uh, demonic spirits, and, which were ruining her life. And he, uh, when he did that, she became a faithful servant. So let me talk just a little bit about, sure, a few things about demon possession, what is written in the Bible about them. So some symptoms of demon possession is uh, speechlessness, uh, as you see that in Matthew 3 and th 9 and 33. Violence, you see that in Matthew 8 and 28. Blindness. You see that in Matthew 12 and 22. Convulsions, you see that in Mark 1 and 26. And foaming at the mouth. Hmm. That kind of reminds me of some things, some church services I've been to. And you see that in Luke 9 and 39. So she served Jesus and his disciples, ministered unto them when they were uh, ministering uh, to the people. She was a passionate follower of Christ. And uh, she was the first person to see Jesus after the resurrection, after he had risen from, from the dead. So um, she was the last one to leave the cross and was the first one at the tomb. All right. So let's look at our scriptures. Because we're coming from four different authors, I didn't decide, I decided not to talk about who Mark was, who John was. We decided not to go that route. We decided we're just going to go straight into the scripture. So the first thing I want to ask you, the title of the lesson is Mary Magdalene, a faithful disciple. So when you think of faithful, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? So this is time for you guys to participate. Uh, when you think of faithful, what comes to mind? Trust. Trust. That's a good one. Um, commitment, committed. Commitment, good one. Uh, reliable. Reliable. That's good. All of those are really good, really good ones. So the definition is steadfast in affection or alliance, basically being loyal, uh, being contentious, and as well as a binding like commitment, like, uh, missionary said and um so and the disciple we know the disciple is a person that's a follower now see we love to just say that there's only disciples of christ but we know that's not the truth uh we have been bombarded as of late since january the 6th of other kind of followers we ain't gonna talk about that today but i just thought i'd throw that out there but we know that we are disciples of christ so there's some characteristics of being faithful. We know that being loyal, uh, the things that you guys mentioned, trustworthy, um, being patient, loving, leaders, as well as followers. Um, they are people that, uh, that you can count on. That is what we consider to be faithful. So, so let's, we're going to go ahead and get jump into the scriptures. Luke 8, 1 through 3. Somebody can read. Ooh, ooh, I found that too. Um, this is the NIV version. Okay. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Chusa the manager of Herod's um, household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. I love that. Did you hear what she said? That they supported them and they didn't ask for, I don't know, they might have sold some chicken dinners. I don't know. Um, they sold, I mean, they, they didn't ask for uh, funds from the church. They supported them in ministry, 
out of their own money, which, I mean, we do that today. We take up offerings and different things of that nature. And sometimes we take up too many offerings. But anyway, we, uh, they supported them financially. They supported them with substance, basically nourished them, fed them, uh, took care of them uh, during that time when they're ministry. And, and, and those of us that have been in ministry for a while, we understand that it's extremely important to be uh, for someone to pray for us, which is another thing they I'm sure they did. Uh, someone to to admonish us or to try to encourage us, basically. Uh, those things are extremely important because you have enough people trying to put you down or take you out of the element of the spirit realm. I'll put it that way. That's how we're going to put it today. So we see that um, she took care of the disciples as well as Jesus. Uh, and they uh, mentioned these women that they mentioned are women that have the names of the women. They have money, basically. They were considered to be pillars. Well, maybe not Mary Magdalene, but she did have money, but uh, might not have been a pillar in the community at this point. But um, she had money. Joanna, she was a person that was considered to be a a humble person. Uh, we know that uh, Mary Magdalene was a devoted person. And we know that these women, uh, their gifts were utilized in the church, in the body of Christ. And see, it doesn't, they didn't have to be, I mean, we know that they were ministers. Uh, they ministered to the women. They ministered to uh, Jesus in uh, whatever form that God allowed them. And so we have to stop saying that women can't be ministering in the church because we do it all the time. And we have to stop thinking that the only people that God can call is me. I'm not going to take up a text or anything like that. But what I'm saying is whatever gift God gave you, use it for the king. Whatever it is, if it's playing um, an instrument, if it's, uh, if it's just praying, if it's being a door, David said he'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God. If it's if if it's praying, being a a prayer warrior, whatever gift God gave you, if it's the gift of gab, which I call ministers and preachers, or uh, teachers, uh, if you got the gift of gab, go ahead and use it for the Lord. It doesn't matter. There's no small gift in the kingdom. We have set these gifts apart and set them up high and set some low. But God does, it doesn't matter to God. Be faithful to what God has called you to do. So I'm going to open it up before we move to the next scripture. So Caleb, get ready. Uh, so does anybody have any thoughts about this ministry that we see utilized uh, through the women uh, ministering to the disciples and ministering to Jesus? Do you have any comments on that? Uh. God called on the woman to um birth Jesus. Amen. Yes, he did. I just think about um, it's good. I I think it's good for all to see um that women also had a role in ministry. You know, I know people struggle with uh certain things. Um, <laughs> a woman should have has a certain place that they feel like she should hold some people feel like that she should only hold certain positions and stuff like that um but it's good to see that um women you know other than you know mary giving birth to, to jesus um they also supported ministry and even back then in that in that time so i think that's good amen amen um I just wanted to say I believe that the church does itself a great disservice when it doesn't allow women to operate in the gift that God has called them into. Uh, not all women are called to be ministers, but those there are some that have been called. Uh, they should not be silent because they are uh, God. Chose, God gave them that calling. No man gave it to them. So man does not have the authority to shut it down because it didn't come from man, it came from God. So if God is not standing up against a woman ministering, then why should the church? Amen. Boy, that was well put. Amen. Amen. All of these comments was very, very, very good. Um, Caleb, your turn. 
Come out with your scripture, sweetie. You said Mark fifteen forty. Yes. You commuted. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene. Mary, the mother of James and the younger of Joseph, no, Jose's and Salome. Amen. Amen. So even then, you see that um, it talks about the ministering and their roles in the church and how important their roles were uh, in the in the in the body of Christ in the kingdom. See, I, I, I have to be careful because God has right now we're kind of in transition. So we, uh, you know, to say church, God has already been dealing with me about seeing the body of Christ, the, the kingdom of God, and and not necessarily a, a church. Now I'm not saying that he, he does not. He does say don't forsake assembling together, fellowshipping together. He does talk about that, but right now we're in transition, so I have to be careful that I don't say church because people ask me, what church you go to? Oh, Lord. And now I just have to just tell them we're in transition. Amen? So, and guess what? God ain't left me, and I haven't left God. Amen? All right. So, Minister Kelly, if you wouldn't mind, start. go ahead and let's talk about, let's start with John 20, reading uh, those eight verses. John 20, starting with verse 10. Uh, verse 10 through 18? Yes, sir. Okay. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And see two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they, they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, Rabboni, which is to say master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. That's a good word, boy. This is a good word right here. Ah. Well, we're going to see how the Lord is going to move in this little bit of time frame that we have, and we're going to see what God is going to say. So let's jump right in. Uh, I want to give Minister Kelly an opportunity to say anything that spoke out to him before I start, um, or if anyone's, if some, something said something to you while you were uh, reading or uh, while you were listening, uh, go ahead and, you know, at this time, go ahead and and talk about it. Uh, well, only, well, what I see when I read these scriptures are, we see a woman here that is committed to God, to Jesus, and so much to the point where she's came, she's came looking for him. And not only has she come looking for him, but she's also came willing to take him away with her. In other words, she just wanted to honor her God, and she was committed. But also, we see in these scriptures that uh, the commitment of Jesus to his people because he could have chosen not to have showed up. But when he saw her commitment, it, 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 it provoked him to show, him, show himself, even though he hadn't yet ascended. He hadn't yet, yet taken his rightful place. 
but he felt like that she needed to see him in order to be comfortable. So oftentimes, uh, when we lose loved ones and 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 people that we that we love, uh, sometimes we figure we, we we try to figure out where is God at in this, and 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 if He would only show His face, then we would have some type of comfort that uh, He is involved in this decision. But here we see that uh, God is still yet with this woman, although He's still yet with us even in our times of mourning and our times of misunderstanding and in our times of not yet understanding what God is doing, God is still yet committed to his people. Amen. That was awesome. That was awesome. Anybody else? No, ma'am. Mr. Caleb, you have something I tell you something, boy, that word be bubbling up in you. You can't, you can't hardly get it out. So I mean, boy, that brother did that thing. So let's talk about, I mean, he read pretty much hit just about almost all the points that, you know, God has shared with me because that's just what, how the word do. That's just how I do. It just do just like that. So let's look. First of all, we see that the disciples went away to their own house. Now, the part that we didn't really talk or we didn't read, we know that the disciples, somebody went down there, they said Jesus' body was gone, and so they ran to the tomb, you know, they even talked about how people outran, one, somebody outran, Peter got there first, but wouldn't go in until Peter got there, and then they go in and they see that the body of Christ is not there. First of all, you got two things going on there. You got the, the uh, big old rock that was in front of the uh, tool. Who rolled that away? The guards that were supposed to have been there, where were they at? They were missing. And so when you go in and you see, and they walk away from there, knowing that Jesus, now it's, it's almost kind of uh, ironic how they don't remember that Jesus said he was going to rise again. All of the time he spent with them and talked about it, they still, at this point, they were like, oh, my God, what has happened? What is happening? So they left and went to their, their own places. But we can see how sometimes when you have someone like Mary Magdalene, who was faithful, she couldn't just leave it like that. She was grieving. And we know about grieving because, you know, as, you know, as we have talked about in the past, you know, our mom has passed away about two years ago and so we know about grieving and even gr still grieving now to to be honest if you want to be truthful about the thing but uh you know how you know sadness can set in and so I can see her being overwhelmed because I understand when you lose a loved one how overwhelming that can be and how it don't just end when we put her in the grave it don't just end oh, geez, so I'm just saying it, it, it continues and you have to constantly cry out to God and ask him to help you uh, with when you have someone that you have loved and, 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 and you've been faithful to that person. So let's look at Mary Magdalene. I believe she just became overwhelmed, you know, with grief and sorrow because she couldn't find Jesus. And so she, I feel like she, and, and in some uh, scriptures it, talk, it alludes to the fact that they thought the body had been stolen. They was trying to hide the body away from his followers, they believe. And so she was overwhelmed and she was kneeling at the base of the tomb or, or at the grave site. And she was just sitting there and she was thinking to herself, where could he have been? Where could they have taken him? What could he have gone? And all she came to do was to, to you know, at that time they did like burial and incense and, and put different things to her. Uh, on the body and so she came to give her homage to the to Jesus Christ and he wasn't there and so we see her overwhelming grief and we can understand that if you have lost loved ones or you have been lost people that have been close to you so let's look we see that she's overwhelmed and and she still she, it's like I can just see her sitting there like she's staring into space yes yeah, she's staring into the tomb but I can just feel her how I've done in past times, just staring into space, not looking at anything, just trying to figure everything out and understand why these things are going on. Why do I have these feelings? I know God. I know the Lord. So why do I still have these problems and, and feel the way that I do? Okay, y'all, I'm just tapping in.
into what I feel like Mary went through and I also connected it to the way I feel about it. So we see in verse 12, she 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 looks out there and then she begins to all of a sudden. Now I'm like trying to figure out, did she not see the angels there before? When everybody was there, nobody else saw the angels but her. And I believe that her soul cried out to Jesus like Minister Kelly said, and, and it caused him to react about his people. And so the angels were there, right? And, and it, it's interesting how sometimes God will send someone to try to comfort you uh, before he comes in himself. In, in, in hopes, I, in, I'm thinking like in hopes that that will help, you know, that will aid it a little bit. And so the angel was there, and I love this, this connection that they say because this is what I got out of it. We know the number of two means union. It also means by two or three, let every, you know, the uh, witnesses also is the number two. So we see two angels. We see one at the head, which stands for authority and leadership and power. And then we see one at the foot, which stands for humility. So we see, and we know we see this all in Jesus, right? We know that he has authority and leadership and power. And we know that he has humility and compassion for his people. And so they begin to ask a question. You know how people ask you questions and sometimes you don't want them asking you questions because you just want to feel some kind of way. I'm just the only one that did it. You know, because I, I, just leave me alone. Let me be in my pity party. Let me be sick, sad, and sorry if I want to. It wasn't your mama. In this case, it wasn't your Jesus. <laughs> He was my friend. And so she, she, and then they began to start asking her questions. I could just see, okay, y'all probably didn't do this. But I could see uh, Mary Magdalene doing like this. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's just me. I thought that. I'm like, I could just see her turning her head. For real? You going to ask me these questions? I'm going to ask her, why is she weeping? Why is she crying? And I can just think about how sometimes we can do something for somebody so long and they can tell us so long. And I mean, I can remember even some of the things that my mom had said before she passed to, to try to prepare us. Oh, these are some of the things I want done and this, that, and the other. And we're standing talking about, don't be talking about that stuff. You know what I'm saying? She was preparing us ahead of time. And I even go back further to when my bishop died, Bishop uh, Georgie Thomas, and how he was preparing the church. You know, he hired, he uh, ordained a bunch of ministers, and we didn't understand. I'm like, we don't need all these. What's really going on? But he was preparing the church. He was preparing us that he was getting ready to go. And for a month or more, he talked about the uh, mountaintop experience, about Jesus. And, 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 and I, I'm just beginning to think about, so he was preparing us. And so this time, Jesus had been preparing them. He told them what's getting ready to happen. He told them that all of these things were going to be. And then it's like, they were like, dumbfounded almost. I mean, because you, you know you hear a thing, but you don't always totally understand it. And so as they begin to talk, as she began, so then it's like, okay, so the angels, it wasn't enough to tell them, that, you know, he said he was going. Remember, he talked about it. And I can just imagine her weeping. And, and then Jesus asked her, why are you weeping? And who are you seeking? You already have me in your heart, in your mind, and in your soul. What are you looking for? And so Kurt Franklin sang a song about that. What are you looking for? But we talk about, so he begins to, to address her sorrow in her heart and try to push her toward her future in verse 15. He's he telling her, you can't stay here. You can't continue to be stuck right here. you got to move forward. And so he begins to talk to her. He says, huh. he talks to her and he says, he asks her the question. And then he calls her name. You call my name. You know my name. So he begins to call her name. And you know how you know when your mama calls you? Oh, you know how you know when people call you, your husband, your wife, or you know how they call your name and you know it's them? So when he called her name, she knew it was Jesus. She still kind of uh, turned around and she began, do. so the question was, 
Do you know the voice of God? Do you know the voice of your Savior? Have you spent enough time to understand who he is and when he's speaking to? I'm going to let y'all answer that in just a second. So then he tells her, you cannot hold or cling to me. In other words, you're holding on too tight to the present, which is stopping you from and helping you to lose sight of the future. Then he tells her that you, that you can't touch me because I haven't rose up to sit on the right hand of the Father. And then he gives her an assignment. This is ministry all day long here, y'all. Clean. Get rid of the past and move forward. Ascend. Rise up. Get up from your place of sorrow and move into the future of what God has you to do. Assignment. Go tell my brothers I'm going. This is what I'm going to do. I've already told y'all, but I want to remind you. He affirmed it with her. And guess what? In verse 18, she did what he said. So when God is calling us to do particular things, and we are in, stuck in a spot, God ain't going to leave us there. He is not going to leave us there. So I'm going to open it up for a minute or two for comments. That's pretty much the lesson. Don't that got that as question. So uh, let the Lord speak through. I don't have uh, it. Go ahead. Go. Uh, go, go ahead. No, I said I didn't have any other comments about uh, it. Well, the only thing I wanted to say was uh, while you uh, give me a dissertation of the scriptures, um, the only thing I could think about was how oftentimes we wait to put our house in order uh, and, and, and sometimes we wait too long in other words, someone else have to step in and put our house in order, which they might misinterpret what we want it done. So Jesus didn't start putting his house in order close to the time of his death. He started putting his house in order uh, up, up on the time that he began ministry because he oftentimes reminded the disciples that he wasn't going to be there and that he's going to have to leave and he's going to prepare a place for us. And we should come unto him one day. That was part of his ministry from the time that he started all the way up until the time that it ended. And so when the ministry came fulfilled, then a lot of them were still shocked because they was uh, brushing off uh, his, his, his comments. But if you think about it, Jesus also has given us a blueprint to put our house in order. We shouldn't wait uh, to, uh, uh, for our will or for, for things to be placed in order. We should have a, a will in place. So if there come a point in time where we have to check up out of here, a uh, God call us home, those that we love and those that we wanted to have something, they wouldn't be omitted in our will because we had included them already. So uh, I just wanted to say that uh, we shouldn't wait. And, and, and I, I don't think me and you have waited we, we made sure that we, we put some things in place in case God called us home that uh, people that people would get what we wanted them to have. Amen. 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 That's good. That's good. So let's get to these questions. We have about four minutes. <clears throat> so what city did Mary Magdalene live in? Magdalene. Close. Magdala. Magdala. That's close. It was close. Huh? You said what? Magdalene. It's Magdala. Oh. That's why I said close. It's close. Next question. What, okay, what problem did Jesus fix for Mary Magdalene that caused her utter devotion and faithfulness to Christ? He healed her from the demon. Delivered her from seven demons. Amen. Amen. What moment do you have that causes your devotion for Christ? What moment in your life? If you could just name one. Can you explain that question? What moment in your life causes you to be devoted to Christ? 
when he blesses me. Amen. Amen. I think um, I, at times of brokenness, uh, that's probably when I felt most the closest to the Lord. And um, I, I really trusted that God, whatever was going to happen, he, I was going to get through it. And um, because of my relationship with him, that was going to, there's been, obviously I've had several moments like that, but. We all have. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Minister Kelly? Uh, well, what brought me commitment to Christ was not what my mother said, not what other people told me, but when I needed him for myself. When I got in trouble and I knew nobody could help me but God, and God came through for me, that's when I became devoted uh, to Christ and, and my salvation. And the time that I can remember was when I was in jail, locked up and asking God to deliver me, and he did that for me. Amen. Amen. That is awesome. That is awesome. We all have to have that personal experience to be able uh, to be committed to Christ. We can't do it for our mothers, our fathers, or, or for anyone else. We have to have that personal relationship with him. Uh, and he wants us to have that same, that relationship. So that's one of the great things that we see with the faithfulness of the disciple uh, Mary Magdalene is that she was faithful to God and God had done some things for her. And, um, and her faithfulness was her evidence that she was grateful for what God had done. So thank you for coming. That's pretty much the end of our Bible study. We have like a minute and 30 seconds. Um, so I'm going to pray us out and uh, see you next Sunday, the same time at nine o'clock. Uh, we'll see you then. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we're just asking that each and every family represented here that you would touch their heart and mind and that you would cause us to be faithful disciples of yours. We're asking, Lord God, those that are traveling, you would give them uh, traveling grace and mercy. Those that need healing, that you would heal their bodies, Father God. And those that are lost, Lord God, that you would bring them home. Bring them home to you. We love you, God. We appreciate you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Amen. Amen. So we will talk to you guys later on. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Sunday school on the go. Share and like this video. Share and like this video. And God bless you all. Amen.